Hi folks, welcome back to our timber frame workshop build. Today it's wet, it's miserable, but I managed to get this done. Stick around and I'll show you how. this is definitely going to become just a short interlude in uh, in Tuesday's episode because I've just gone and done it. I'll show you what I've done. It's frosty, there's still snow on the ground. It's not a time to be laying blocks but that's what we've got to do. So this side down here I did on Friday just before the snow but it was all covered up and I did that section at the same time. Then this afternoon I've done that wall and down here, I've got one last block to go in there. I think I've got enough muck to do that. Right, so yesterday went okay as far as the block work goes. We didn't get around to any of the framing, so I'm hoping that we can get some assembly done today. The only issue is it's meant to rain all day, but we'll see how we go. First up, I'm gonna make some more space, get rid of these ones so I can free up the saw horses because I think we're gonna need all horses on deck. all the beams we don't need out of the way now I can rearrange things so hopefully we can slide tenons in and out without sitting on the floor the first three posts are fairly painless and they're fitting okay this one needs to shift across by three mil a bit tight anyway so we've got a bit of leeway there uh, these two went in pretty well what I'm now realizing is that we need to peg and put the braces on and stuff. And I'd rather be looking at the inside to do that because the pegs are gonna be done from the inside. So I'm actually gonna flip the frame over. first two joints in and podged with our podgers. Uh, they basically simulate what the tapered oak pegs will do when we come to actually put it together. But of course these we can knock out again. If you try and drive an oak peg in there as a temporary measure or any peg, it's just gonna com get completely wedged. You'll never get it out. So the idea with these, you can knock them back out again. Uh, and we'll, I've only bought two, so we'll reuse them as we work around. But it just means that I know that these joints aren't gonna pull apart as I pull or hammer the other end at the beam. The saw horses aren't completely level, so we will improve on that. These are now drilled through 
uh, just the mortise so now I need to transfer our mark to here and then move it three mil closer. You might have seen me using this instead of drilling and then using the auger bit and then making a mark and measuring. This is a pricker and it just has a little offset pin there. So you line up this flat face here with your shoulder and then that will automatically put a pin mark three mil closer to the shoulder than this hole. That's what draws it all in when we tighten it all up. waterproof chain, a little bit soggy. I am now done on the joinery side of things, I think, and I've gone around and numbered everything up so we know where everything's gonna fit together. This one is ready to pull out and then drill, they're all marked up, and the braces are done both ends, so I can, I've just started marking out the mortises so I can take pieces apart I get the chain mortar back out to get those done. And then same down the bottom, I just done a different mark because these pencil lines aren't gonna hang around for very long. Right, that is the wall complete. Let me, uh, let's go up on the scaffolding and take a look from above. So everything's fine this end. That end needs to be just tightened up a little bit. That's why I had the clamps out. The only thing I'm kind of still contemplating is putting these two braces here and here, just in that center bay. That's entirely aesthetic. It's not structural at all. It's just that is gonna be the main background for future videos. I kind of figured that it would frame the background of videos quite well if I just had those braces, but it's another 45 minutes of work and I'm not sure it's that necessary. These two we definitely need, it's just whether I put these in. I'm not so sure. I think it's just gonna use up loads of that wall space. I was going to have cabinets or a tool wall there. These braces are pretty chunky. This meter or less than a meter height is basically being taken up by these. Although it would look pretty cool. All right, we're going for it.
what I could have done with these is made them a little bit more vertical, but we've already cut the tenons, so we'll go 45. It's all together, all the parts are done, and I did end up doing all four braces. Hopefully, that's just going to give a really nice, sort of iconic background to the workbench. Iconic, probably not iconic, it's a bit dramatic. Anyway, so happy with that end. This section here, which is number three, is all good. Pegs to drill still, but I'll do that once I've marked up, drilled taken apart I can stack this whole lot um, until we come to raise the frame this one here fits okay I'm just gonna shorten that tenon a little bit just so the whole thing shifts up a little bit and then I'll drill those two that end is all good so it might have taken a whole day it was a bit wet but I'm glad that we've pretty much battled on and ticked this whole side which is the west wall the one that's gonna be behind me against that fence the east wall is almost a mirror image of that. It's just got a doorway, so it's got one extra stud. The two ends are a little bit different. So I'm thinking tomorrow we'll get the east wall done and then we'll have to start working on the other planes, the other, other elevations. And to do that, we'll use the end posts from this wall and the other wall and do the bit in between that. So you've kind of got to think in 3D, um, but it should be fairly straightforward been great to get to this point because it means we can basically take all this apart in the morning park it to one side and start all over again so that's it thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you tomorrow